I took it a chance to, to challenge that also. For 10 years, I did it without funding. But for 10 years after that, I took the funding and made uh, many different uh, platforms in terms of performance events. And now I'm working with an archive. I'm trying to start an independent archive in Singapore. And this took a lot of, it drained a lot of my energy as well as my resources actually. I started to uh, very funnily sell my work in terms of uh, photographs of performance work, you know, uh, which uh, uh, I spent almost every cent on the archive on top of the funding that we got, which was very little in terms of the archive. You know. I didn't know it took so much out of me until I thought I was totally broke last year, <laughs> uh, recently, just before going to Mark Vessel Hong Kong. I'm trying to lead to what, what I'm doing here now. When I was in Art Basel, Hong Kong, my, my, uh, it was the first time I was in such a commercial enterprise uh, 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 commitment. Because the galleries actually could come to me and say, she believed in my work. Because uh, most of the other galleries, whenever I go to them, they ask me, go home and paint something. We don't want to see this kind of work here. You know, because they think that it's not something that you market. But apparently these uh, uh, galleries understood what it's about somehow and put my work in the Art Basel Hong Kong as a solo exhibition. And it, 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 it did quite well really actually. We haven't uh, added up the books yet. But towards the end of the four days event, I went to an art conference in uh, Hong Kong University. And the topic of the, the, the conference was art and value which I wanted to speak about actually and, 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 and as a Hong Kong but because maybe they didn't know who I am, they didn't put me on the panel. But there was a conference in the Hong Kong University organized by another uh, department of Hong Kong University and as, as well as one of the alternative art galleries and it was David Elliott chairing the, uh, the conference. And I went to see him. There was two sessions going on. I didn't speak at all, but at the end of it, I made a comment. I said something like, it seems that the values of society changes over time in history, and usually artists are responding to that, but the law does not seem to follow suit. And I did not really give any comment in terms of the details of it. And David and they picked that up and said, yes, we went. I understand what you are talking about. We did not mention the, actually the sensitive part of it. Because on the day itself, in the morning, I put something on the internet, which says something like, it was uh, on a music uh, 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 group, what do you call it, software, uh, what do you call it, website. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. And before I sang the song, which I recorded and put it up there, I said something like, what's going on in this society? <coughs> My friend, Chen Guang, he's an artist, he did a performance in his own private space, which kind of commemorate, I, I mean, I, I say these things which I didn't say exactly, but uh, it's understood what I meant, was that he did a performance in his studio, which was something to do with the uh, uh, incident 25 years ago. But it was to a small audience and he was picked up by the police three days later. And he was at that time under house uh, under arrest without anyone knowing where he is. So I said, What is this? The, it's not the artist breaking the law this time. It looks to me like the police are breaking the law. Because there's no such law against doing a performance in your own private space. So I sang a song. But that day, after the uh, conference ended, I went to the toilet and I, I had a blackout for nearly half an hour. I woke up and I looked into the mirror. My face was full of blood and I had four bumps on my head. To cut the long story short, I went back to the hotel. My friends, I told my friends about it. They came. My gallery straight away sent me to the hospital, made a police report. But they, when they asked me if I wanted to report it as an assault, I said no because I don't have any evidence. 
I had a blank. I don't remember. How can we investigate anything? You know? And then the, the thing is, at this point in time, I'm supposed to go to Shanghai to receive an uh, award given by the BSI Conference, Performance Studies International. They decided to have this year's conference in Shanghai. But after the incident in Hong Kong, I just feel a little bit of, not afraid, but I needed time and space away from China. Because it's really too much uh, to go there to Shanghai at this point in time to receive the award. So I thought, since I'm here, I'll make the speech or the performance <coughs> here to send it, it to them. Because it is, in some ways, I'm feeling the trauma of this experience actually. I come from a society in Singapore which is generally very very top-down kind of authoritarian government, although it's democratic. We, in Singapore, are a post-colonial country. We have been independent for 49 years now. Next year will be our 50th year anniversary. But because of the large Chinese percentage of population, we tend to look at China like a very close thing. In some ways, there has been many incidents where Singapore government does not actually like the idea if any artist make any comment on Tiananmen incident in 1989. I would like to say for one that I have never seen that as my part of my practice either. Many times when artists ask me to take part in, in events which commemorate the, the June 4th, they call it 6 4 you know, in Chinese uh, uh, alarms, they say 6 4 89 in commemorating the Tiananmen incident where the students demonstrated in, in Tiananmen Square. Many, many people <coughs> were killed. Although in the news there is no real, uh, uh, what do you call, there is no, no agreement into how many were killed or what happened exactly. Because the Chinese government saw that as a protest which is against the law or even a riot. Whereas the Students themselves saw it as a peaceful demonstration. So there is a difference of opinion. In Hong Kong, every year on June 4, they are still demonstrating in the streets. For one thing, I know these artists and they've always invited me to participate. But I am not the type of artist who does things like that. I believe in the voice of the individual. The problem with demonstrations, I, I find, is there's a kind of mock mentality. That I don't participate in. But I believe in the right of the artist to say things about it. So, for example, my friend Chen Wang making a performance in his private space, to me, is a legitimate work of art, although it's to a small private audience. And to me, it is a problem if the police arrest somebody for doing something in his private space because it does incur a kind of infringement of privacy or the rights of an individual artist. And to me, going to China to receive an award concerning performance art, I feel it's very problematic in this situation that I am in. Although my, my incident is a bizarre incident in the toilet, the kind of way that it was reported in the newspaper, first of all, has shown a kind of irresponsibility of the mass media in some ways. Because what they reported was saying that I said those things in the forum which I did not. Like saying that uh, what is happening here, my friend is arrested and it's not the artist who broke the law, the police broke the law. I did not say that in public, in the audience. I said it on the internet, which is an international thing that only people who access the internet <coughs> are of it. And this block is actually, I think, blocked out in China, mainland China. But in Hong Kong, you can still assess it. You know. This makes me question how did it happen? It sounds to me very bizarre, but there are things that I cannot say because it means that I'm saying things that might, might question the, the jurisdiction of the country. And although I'm not from China, there is a kind of, to me, a kind of imperialism of Singapore towards China that. We in Singapore are still not protected when it comes to this kind of thing. So that is why I feel very upset about the whole situation. 
because I have a lot of people telling me not to comment on my own. Just because it's about China. In a way, Singapore is an independent country and yet it seems to be under a kind of subtle kind of imperialist kind of big brother from a bigger country like China. Which is very to me is very problematic because when we think about what the United Nations mean about every every country has a, its own sovereign rights, it seems to me not very true in fact.
was strange.
I destroy it, and let me sing. And let me sing for a day that I have some other things like this.